This is the field view, which is one of 11 different views in GTX. And the body of this view shows a spreadsheet type of arrangement showing all the runners in the race and those horses that have been scratched. In this image, the runners are sorted or ranked according to the weight for age performance ratings or WPR ratings, one of a number of ranking orders, that number being defined by your chosen subscription package. And you can see that this user has chosen to include the TAB win dividends as some of the fields. These are continually updated direct feeds from the Queensland, Victoria and New South Wales TABs if you activate them by clicking the heading buttons. I'll explain more about this feature later. The fields or columns of data can be chosen by you from a list of about 200 fields that are available for the field view. You have the choice of in what order your fields are displayed and what font is used. Apart from this field view, there are a number of other views available, that number depending on your chosen subscription package. And each view has a list of available fields relative to each screen's purpose. We'll take a brief look at some of the features of the field view. If I explained everything relating to it, I would be here for hours and you would no doubt fall asleep. Remember you can see fuller explanations in our online manual. To access that, on the menu bar click on Links, then Online Help. Your browser will open and display the contents page of the manual. This is what we call the Speed Bar. On it, you can choose which already downloaded meetings to load into GTX, choose meeting files, jockey files and late files to download, send all loaded races to your printer, send the currently viewed race to your printer, switch the photo finish off or on, Backup and restore databases. View the messages that have been sent to you during file downloads. The Scratchings button has been superseded by the Scratchings links on the menu bar's Links tab. Those links take you to various web pages containing Scratchings information. You might as well get rid of the Scratchings button as it's no longer usable. To do that, hold down your delete key while you click on it. The Systems button opens your System Developer or Race Day Auto Selector if you have purchased either of those programs. Now to the Rank Bar. The runners in any race can be listed, or more commonly called ranked, in a number of ways and this can be achieved by simply selecting the relevant button on the rank bar at the left of the field view. Just a few examples are TAB Saddlecloth Order, GTX Ratings Order, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria TAB Dividends, GTX Speed Map Ranked Order, displaying expected settling positions after the start, wait for age performance ratings predictive order. This is our photo finish. You will have noticed while we were selecting the various ranking buttons that the images representing the runners in this big green bit were changing positions with each selection of a different ranking button. That's because they're indicating the finish of the current race as assessed by the net ratings of the selected rating. In this current view, that's the Wait for Age Performance Ratings. Please be aware that although this photo finish can be turned off, 
it must be visible for the GTX speed map to display if you want to use that feature. Just while we're here, the depth of the photo finish can be increased by placing your mouse pointer within the photo finish area and briefly holding down your left mouse button and decreased by your right mouse button. Now we'll go to the Views bar, which gives access to a whole bunch of other views via these buttons. This first one is for the Field view, which is the view you are now looking at and is used to get back to the Field view when you are on one of the other views. Next to it is the Last Start Differences view, which shows selected fields of data that enable you to compare positive and negative changes in weights, distances, class values, barrier positions, etc. between each horse's last start and today's race. As with the other views, you can accept the default sets of data columns or change them to your own preferences. The data from this view can be printed as well. Next up is the Compare Previous Encounters view, which shows in chronological order the comparative details where two or more of today's runners have competed in the same race during their last 16 race starts. Again, the columns of data can be changed by you and the data is printable. Then we have the Alphabetical Listing view, which as the name suggests, lists all horses, including scratchings, accepted for the currently loaded meetings. All data columns that are relevant to this view are being used in the default configuration, but you can move them around to whatever order you want, or remove columns from the display. Following that is the dual acceptors view, which lists alphabetically all dual acceptors, which are horses that have accepted for more than one race amongst the meetings that have been loaded even though those meetings may be on more than one day. This could include horses that have accepted for two races at one meeting, or one race at each of two or more meetings. Then there's the jockey view, which lists alphabetically all jockeys riding in the currently loaded meetings, followed by the trainer view, which, as you guessed, lists all the trainers with runners in the currently loaded races. Now, depending on your subscription package, you will have one, two or three buttons to the right of the trainer view, which are labelled User 1, User 2 and User 3. These user views are in effect extra field views. Each comes with a default configuration. User 1 is set up to display daily jockey statistics. User 2 relates to various aspects of the WPR rating. And User 3 concentrates on each horse's career statistics. The columns in these views can be changed from the default to whatever you want, as is the case for the other views, including the field view. While we're on the topic of views, there's another one that we're not covering in this field view video and that's the form view, which is accessed by clicking on the name of the horse whose form you want to look at. On it you will see a myriad of details and statistics relating to that horse's prior runs. Cycle through all the runners in the race with the next horse and previous horse buttons. To go back to your previous view, click on this little circular arrow or the Field View button to go back to the Field View. OK, a few things that are handy to know in no particular order. The rail position for the currently viewed race is shown here. Over here are two clocks that are always visible at the top right of all views. The clock on the right is simply the current time as signified by your computer's time and matches exactly the computer clock usually seen on the Windows system tray at the bottom right of your desktop. If your computer clock is not set to the correct time, these clocks will not be accurate. The clock on the left, with the coloured background, counts down the time remaining until the start time of the currently viewed race. 
with the background colour changing twice as the start time draws closer. Once the race start time has passed, the clock then indicates the elapsed time since the race start time, with the background colour a deep red. If you need to manually scratch a horse, just click its saddle cloth number button. To unscratch the horse, click it again. The track conditions of all today's races are entered automatically when you download the late file after 8.15am. The late file is updated with any new information throughout the race day, but you will need to manually download it. You can do that as many times as you like. Even so, the possibility could arise where you need to adjust track conditions manually for a particular race or meeting. Clicking repeatedly on the colour-coded track condition box will cycle through the 10 track conditions plus X11, which indicates synthetic. To change the indicated track condition for a particular race, click on the track condition box until the condition you're after appears. To change the track condition for the whole meeting, first set the condition for one race, then hold down the control key on your keyboard while you click the same track condition box once more. Occasionally during a race meeting, something may happen that will cause the race club to put back the start times of the remainder of the day's races. The amend post times feature allows you to adjust the post times or start times of the affected races. Click on race, amend post times, while viewing the meeting to be adjusted and the amend post times box will appear. A single click in the text box containing the start time will advance the time by one minute. If, for example, in this race it was necessary to change the start time of the race to 10 minutes later, you would place your cursor over the indicated time for the race and click 10 times, or click and hold down the mouse button momentarily and the minutes will increase quite rapidly. If you inadvertently go past the required time, using exactly the same procedure with the right mouse button will cause the minutes to cycle backwards. Of course, you will then need to adjust the times of the following races by the required amount. Once all times have been changed in the meeting, before doing anything else, you must immediately reload the meetings for the changes to stick. Another standard feature on the field view is the TAB Live Odds, which displays the current approximate dividends or live odds on offer for each horse from the three TABs, commonly known as the New South Wales TAB, the Victoria TAB and the Queensland TAB. The frequency and latency change as the start time gets closer and ceases when the first second and third finish positions are displayed on correct weight. The default configuration of the field view includes the three columns needed to display the live win odds, plus a fourth column, unfortunately labelled BO, which displays the best of the odds on offer from the currently operating totes. At the left of the live odds columns is the TAB fixed column which is the price that is available from the TAB fixed odds bookmakers at the time of the update. You can also choose to add place odds columns for the three TABs. To view the live odds, obviously you need to have today's races loaded into GTX and you must have already downloaded the morning late file because it contains the TAB codes that are needed for GTX to access the three TAB's live feeds. Then just click each of the N, Q, V column header buttons to activate the TAB servers and you will notice the odds begin to appear, if you are connected to the internet of course. The efficient operation of the live odds display requires that your local time is correct. Local time is a setting in GTX that ensures that races occurring in a time zone different to yours will be displayed with a start time as your local time. This can be set under Setup, 
local time. Time offsets are the difference in minutes between your state and other areas. They need to be changed manually by repeatedly clicking in the relevant text boxes to increase the minutes and right clicking to decrease the minutes. What you see here are the offsets required in New South Wales during normal standard time, not daylight saving time. They also need to be adjusted after each daylight saving change. Close and restart GTX to allow these changes to take effect. It is also necessary that your computer clock is set to the correct time and date and the correct world time zone is selected. Now to a few ways you can customise your field view. The first has to do with the columns of data, or fields as we call them. You can add, remove or reorganise these fields to suit your own preferences. This applies to all the views, including the form view. Start by right clicking on a blank space or at least not on a horse name, and from the pop-up menu, choose Select Columns. The Select Columns Field View box opens, showing the current fields on the right. These are the fields that are currently displayed on your field view in the order that they are displayed. On the left is the list of fields that are available for you to include on your field view. To remove a field, Simply double click it. For demo purposes, I'll remove the user horse field. To add a field from the available fields to the current fields, there are two ways. One, drag the field to the position you want it in your lineup. I'll move allowance to a position just after the jockey. The second way is to double click the field which will place it at the bottom of the current fields list, then drag it to the position you want. To reorganise the positions of your fields, just drag them to wherever you want them. Once you have the fields as you like them, you can open the Select Columns box again and click the Save button in the User Defaults section. If you manage to muck up your columns at some future time, you can come back and load your user defaults to restore your setup. You can also choose what font you prefer. On installation of GTX, the default font is MS Sans Serif Regular 8 Point. My personal favourite is Verdana, so to change to that, I right click a blank space on the main body of the screen and from the pop up menu select Set Font. In the font box, in my case, I find Verdana in the font list and select it. I'll leave the style and size as is, then click OK. The font on all views is now Verdana Regular 8 Point. I have mentioned a couple of times about right clicking on a blank space to bring up the select columns and set font menu. Depending on the number of runners in the current race and the size of your GTX window, that may not always be possible. Really, you can right click anywhere in the main body of the view, but not on a horse's name, that's reserved for editing the black book function and not on any column that allows you to enter your own data, such as form comments, horse profile, and user horse comments, none of which is showing in this current layout. And of course, not on the photo finish, in which a right click is used to reduce its depth, as I have mentioned previously. After you've made changes to your configuration, it's a good idea to save your new configuration as your personal defaults to guard against the possibility of some future glitch. To do that, up on the menu bar, click on Program, then Save User Defaults, then confirm by clicking Yes.
If you need to reload your saved configuration at any time, click on Program, then Restore User Defaults, then again Confirm.